Just a quick disclaimer before we start the video. Obviously, do not attempt anything that you see happen here on your own. I have about a decade of experience as a high-performance driving instructor and know how to handle a vehicle at its limits a little bit better than your average person. Uh, both vehicles here are my own, and my wonderful girlfriend helped me conduct these tests, and we both knew the inherent risk that was involved and tried to do it as safely as possible. So again, please don't attempt this. Um, I hope you learned something from it, and it's not something that I would recommend anyone else do. Today we are going to test basic radar cruise control against machine vision using Open Pilot. Most vehicles on the market today have very basic forward camera vision that is quite limited in what it can detect. I'm going to demonstrate that by showing you one of the major limitations of stock radar systems, which is detecting stationary objects. Toyota even says in its own owner's manual that their dynamic cruise control may not detect stopped vehicles in the same lane. And I think a lot of owners don't realize this. Radar is excellent at detecting moving objects, so much so that I think it gives many drivers a false sense of security while using it. But as soon as an object stops moving, you need something else to reliably detect it. This is where computer vision comes in. Here is a point cloud output from a stock Toyota radar, and you can see that it's only outputting objects with some type of relative velocity. If the object is stationary, it's filtered out and won't show up. And you'll see why that is a problem soon when we're dealing with stopped vehicles in our lane. So here we have Open Pilot engaged and we're set to 30 miles an hour and we're just approaching a stopped vehicle in our lane. So let's see what happens. Open Pilot has already detected the vehicle you can see by the yellow triangle on the screen and it's just going to slowly decelerate and come to a stop behind the vehicle. Nothing unexpected. So let's look at the CAN bus data and see what the stock system was trying to do during all of this. So here we have the acceleration commands from the stock system at the top and open pilot at the bottom. And you can see as soon as open pilot starts decelerating when it sees the vehicle, the stock system is actually accelerating because all it sees is a change in speed that it doesn't understand why, so it's trying to compensate for that. And once you get a huge disparity between the two, the stock system falls into a fail-safe mode, and that's why you see that big drop-off at the end. It's not because it suddenly saw the car. It just uh, got so confused by why its commands weren't working that it defaulted into a fail-safe mode. So luckily, Open Pilot is blocking the stock system and replacing it with its own, which you can see here is why it's able to stop nice and smoothly behind the vehicle. So now let's just leave the stock system enabled, disable Open Pilot, and repeat the same test 30 miles an hour towards the stopped vehicle. And you can see here again, Open Pilot sees the car but the stock system does not and actually throws forward collision warning alert and comes to a very aggressive stop behind the car. So let's look at that again in slow motion with some data overlaid. Here we have the acceleration command, the net acceleration, when the brake was pressed and when the forward collision warning alert came on. So basically, just before the forward collision warning, the car has this standard ramp down and deceleration, and then when the alert comes on, it becomes much more aggressive. And right here, it goes all the way down to negative 3.5 meters per second. And then I press the brake right here, and the forward collision warning goes off. I bring the car to a stop. The overall net deceleration was almost half a G. Uh, definitely not a comfortable way to stop the car. And here are a few more examples showing why you should never trust the stock system while approaching a stopped car. <laughs> so 
Since we saw earlier that the stock system can detect moving objects, let's see what happens if we have the vehicle just move ever so slightly at a crawl of just a few miles an hour. So we can see if the car is just moving one or two miles an hour, it's a huge increase in performance and it stops totally normally behind it. Let's look at that again in slow-mo and we can see that OpenPilot detects the car right here. Then just a few moments after that, the stock radar actually picks it up and you can see that by the car appearing on the dash. So very similar performance, even though OpenPilot still detected it just slightly earlier. But since it can see that there's a moving object, it very smoothly slows down just like you would expect. So now you can see that there's a big difference in performance with cars that are using OpenPilot for adaptive cruise control and the vehicles that are using the stock system. So please check your compatibility and ensure you know the difference between them so you know what to expect. So I can see why Tesla decided to ditch their radar because Vision more often than not can outperform radar except for very specific situations. And if there is a stopped vehicle in fog, the radar isn't going to do you any good anyway. And if you are driving in fog or poor visual conditions, you should be slowing down and driving at speeds that are safe for those conditions to where vision could stop, just like a human would. Currently in 0.8.5, OpenPilot does vision radar fusion. So it uses the camera to detect the lead car and then matches that with one of the factory radar points to more accurately track it. In the future, if Kama develops vision-only adaptive cruise control, this could potentially mean more vehicles could be compatible with OpenPilot controlled longitudinal. In those cars, you could filter all radar messages on the CAN bus because OpenPilot would no longer need to see the radar output for reliable lead car tracking. This could expand compatibility for a lot of supported vehicles that are currently limited to the stock systems for cruise control. And with Tesla leading the way with Tesla Vision, I think Kama will be not too far behind. That's all for this video, and I hope you enjoyed, and as always, leave your questions in the comments below, and thanks for watching.